Hello Weather Exam community. This is an attempt to quickly answer the top frequently asked questions we get in Discord. So, when will you sell more weather stations? I'm glad to announce that we started selling stations again since last week. Uh, we're sending unique invitation codes to the emails from the waiting list with a restriction of two devices uh, per email. So please be patient and you will receive your email. Was the order respected on the waiting list? Of course. We have disappointed a lot of people who asked us to make an exception because of whatever reason. The only exception that we did was we gave priority to a couple of community moderators to receive their stations first in order to be familiar with the devices and be able to provide support. Everyone else gets their chance based on the time that they added uh, their email in the waiting list. How easy will it be this project for a non-technical person to join? I don't know. Uh, I mean, it seems pretty easy to me. Uh, if you can understand uh, how uh, to set up a weather station, if you have an internet connection and you have some basic understandings of crypto projects. But we just launched a detailed video with instructions how to set up the weather station and configure the M5 gateway link somewhere so what's special about your hardware well yes there are many low-cost weather stations out there uh, we have selected a set of sensors that we believe provide the best quality and accuracy uh, for their price and we have paired it with a unique gateway that runs our own firmware the m5 gateway uh, among other things uses a special crypto chip that, and, and private keys that sign data and provide proof of device and proof of location. Our firmware connects directly to IPFS nodes to store weather data. And uh, we also have a very powerful device management mechanism that allows us to perform um, massive over-the-air firmware upgrades to future-proof our Web3 infrastructure. What frequency station should we buy in whatever country? So the RF signal from the station to the gateway is a very low strength signal. You can just about pick it up from your house. Uh, so in that sense, there it, it does not, there's no risk of interfering with anything else RF related. It's like a garage door remote control. Now, every government has created uh, some kind of regulations about the ISM bands, the free bands, um, to make sure that people don't abuse them. The most popular ones are 915 MHz for US and 868 for EU. And most other countries are adopting with one or the other and a few have their own frequencies. We do not recommend that you use a frequency that is not allowed in your country. And some customs might actually uh, check this import import. But the fact remains that any frequency will work anywhere. How do you stop people from gaming the project? Um, we have designed the hardware to be as secure as possible using a number of different uh, techniques and mechanisms. And also we are trying to tune the rewards to promote collaboration instead of competition between station owners. Do you see yourselves implementing a KYC method? Uh, we believe we don't need this uh, for our utility token but we probably need some similar mechanism for the station, uh, know your station mechanism. Does the station installation affect the quality of the da data rewards? Yes. If you just throw the station outdoor underneath a tree inside a bush, all measurements will be wrong. And uh, we will detect this kind of problematic weather data and stop the rewards. We're actually working on a machine learning anomaly detection mechanism to be able to detect those kind of situations and apply the penalties. Uh, we will also introduce a know your station mechanism uh, that will include the ability to upload uh, photos of the deployment and the community will reward it as a means to validate the correct installation. The wind measurements or precipitation or temperature or something does not match what the local weather is saying. Well. 
Obviously, that's the whole point of the project. Uh, we are creating hyper-local weather data. Uh, they're going to be different from a weather station that is many kilometers away from you. Uh, please explain how you improve the forecast. So we are aggregating third-party forecasts and we're tracking their accuracy per location and element, selecting the best ones um, for your location and improving them using a correction mechanism that takes uh, historical weather data into account. So are you competing with national weather services around the globe? No, we're not. We actually use their output as, their in, as our input. So we need them. And in the future, uh, they're going to be one of our customers. We're going to sell them our unique data. Will the sales of weather data and services going to be decentralized or managed by the company behind the project? We're trying to develop everything in public and we want to be as transparent as possible. So sales are going to be included uh, into this transparency approach. And uh, also our long-term goal is to convert to a DAO. Any weather stations or sensors that are designed for apartment buildings with no access to roof? Well, we could create some special sensor devices that measure some specific elements of interest uh, for specific use cases that are not affected by the disadvantages of that kind of placement. Uh, I mean, we have ideas, but this kind of use cases, they have to be validated by demand, by real customers first. So the short answer is no. So our focus right now is on full-blown weather stations that are properly deployed. I live in a place with temperatures like minus 30 Celsius during winters. Will the station survive? Well, the current hardware we use is ideal for urban deployments and temperate climates. So in extreme cold environments, the batteries are going to be okay, but the sensors, if they are permanently covered in snow, the measurements are not going to have a lot of value. Uh, special different hardware in the future can address this, but the default solution requires the station to be connected to mains and have some heating mechanism that can melt the snow. So that kind of approach is not practical uh, for an autonomous station that is deployed in the middle of a field. So uh, this is a tricky problem. We'll see how we can address this in the future. I am an iPhone user. Can I participate? Yes. So in addition to the native Android app, we also have web interfaces for everything. So users can register, log in to the backend console, claim their device and see the weather data dashboards with a laptop or uh, any kind of smartphone. We are developing a native iOS application as well because we're going to need Bluetooth capability in the future. Are you interested in adding air quality sensors? No. We have deployed air quality sensors for other prices uh, in the past but our priority right now is weather monitoring. And there are many uh, community powered air quality monitoring projects out there already. They're doing a good job building their network. I don't see a reason for us to spread too thin and compete with existing projects. On the contrary, I think environmental monitoring Web3 projects should collaborate and maximize the value of their network and their data in the future. Any plans for own blockchain? Um, there are plenty of excellent layer one and two chains out there. We believe we don't need our own for the project to be successful. Um, we, the most valuable asset, uh, our weather data, we store it in a decentralized file system, IPFS and Filecoin, and I think that's enough. What's the maximum minimum distance from one station to another in reference to rewards and what happens when multiple stations are in the same location? So we're currently developing the reward mechanism using the hexagonal hierarchical geospatial indexing system H3. That is hexagonico hierarchico geochorico systema in Greek um, at a fixed resolution of seven to simplify calculations. So that means we have split Earth into 100 million cells, roughly, 
uh, 5 square kilometers each, so about 30 million of those cells fall on land. One station should be enough per cell, but we have identified some use cases that we see a need for two or three stations per cell. We will not reward more than three. However, we are also developing an alternative approach that employs variable cell size based on the intensity of the horizontal temperature gradient. Now, in this scenario, calculating the rewards before deployment is going to be more complicated and will require tools. That's why we're shy to share the details until we have finalized this. What size do you want to see this network become? Well, personally, I want to build humankind's largest weather network. Uh, one third of the global economy is affected by weather, so the more weather data we have, the better. What's the roadmap over the next year or two? Well, we plan to launch a token later this year and we will manufacture and deliver at least 20,000 devices before launch. Crypto incentives are great for bootstrapping a network, but we want to be sure that we build a sustainable long-term um, infrastructure and, and project. So as soon as we have the infrastructure stable on mainnet, we will focus on the demand side um, as the supply keeps growing. We have experience in the weather industry, so we have a good idea on the best fit uh, use cases. What about tokenomics and airdropping and white papers? Well, we have uh, plans for a DAO conversion. Therefore, we are very generous with the community. 65% um, of total tokens will go to the community uh, one way or another. And we will explain more in a light white paper that we are preparing. So until next time, I suggest you spend some time studying the awesome revolutionary projects that are currently built in the Web3 ecosystem. And uh, I hope you deploy more weather stations. Take care.